Hi there, it's Katherine Alice. Welcome to my video Q&A. This one is called Blowing It Right When It's Getting Good. <laughs> okay, so one of you wrote this great question, which I'm going to read and then I'll answer. Um, Catherine, just as the pandemic hit in March, I started seeing a man and we've been developing since then. Lately, I feel like pulling the plug because I've detected behaviors, patterns, or values that aren't in line with mine. I like the part where you say good for you. You're attracting a soulmate benchmark. Um, in case you don't know, that's something I talk about where you're getting good signs that you're opening up and you're on the way. She continues, but what does my hesitancy toward this nice man who's obviously attracted toward me and interested in me mean as I'm heading into dark or uncertain waters amid COVID and having second thoughts about sharing a life with him? Thanks. Um, okay. This is only because I know you and I know your situation because definitely some of you out there, if you hit something that's a non-negotiable, then you should just quit. But in this case, this is a person who hasn't been in a relationship long standing for a long time, admittedly doesn't completely get men. And, um, and then also, but it, it's pretty minor, you know, some of the things that she thinks are incompatible. I want to say my answer, first off, is that incompatibility is not that big of an issue. As long as you love each other, there's going to be a difference. You know, you're not the same person and the difference can make it richer. For example, if you're an introvert and he's an extrovert, he can go and do all the errands and you don't have to get out as much. Or he can handle the social life, for example. Um, or maybe you're super volatile and moody, but he's like your rock. You know, he's very solid. That works out those differences can work out very nicely um, and so because I know you you have this pattern of putting up these walls to not let people in and um, finding any excuse to go running you, you have the RB syndrome I call it and that means the runaway bride I work with a lot of women who either knowingly or unknowingly sabotage themselves and they run at the first sign of trouble it's their fight or flight instinct, but that explains for many of you why you've been single this long, even though you won't love. And, um, and so for you, what I would suggest is trying to go for what you have in common, because I know you're enjoying the heck out of each other. Um, and so you want to keep enjoying each other. Try to avoid the things that are hard or that push your buttons. And then we want to dissolve those buttons. If there's something that's irritating to you, it's kind of like a defense that can keep you from getting closer. I feel like many, many people do that. They find these non-negotiables that are not that big of a deal, really not non-negotiable, or they will nitpick and find fault. And it's a weird way to keep your, you far away from getting hurt. A lot of people with that pattern were hurt in their past. They kind of equate love with hurt and they're scared to death to get hurt. And so it's some weird defense, but it keeps the thing that you want the most away from you. And so that's what I would do with you. I would go for the good stuff and try to look for the, the best times you have. Avoid the times that aren't. If you, there's a subject you get on where you start disagreeing and you don't like that argument, get off it change the subject, don't get into the argument because it takes two to argue, and, um, and do something fun. Plan for things where you can avoid some of that, uh, steer the conversation, you do have that in your power. And, um, and then number three is look at yourself. I would do 20 minutes of journaling on why am I nitpicking this much? Why am I being that way? Because this is not a real deal breaker. It's just stuff that's, put, why is he pushing my buttons? What in me is scared? Because usually when your buttons are pushed, you're scared, you're overwhelmed with some feeling, some meaning you're putting into his conversation, which really may not even be there. I take a look. A lot of research shows that 20 minutes of writing on any subject helps breakthroughs happen, improves your life, it organizes your thoughts. And so I, that's what I would give you for homework to address this. Meanwhile, let's not blow it. Let's not throw the baby out with the bath water. It's not a good enough reason. And I want you to keep on with him and work through your own issues first. And without him, don't try to make him change either. This is an inner job that you need to do. And, um, and only when you feel more at peace with it, then you can 
just point out, hey, we're getting into an argument. It's hard on me. I'm sensitive. I don't enjoy it. So let's change the subject. Start making them aware and draw some boundaries. But you always want to deal with your own self and your own issues first. And that's how I have coached many people with deep trauma from their past who have an avoidant attachment style, meaning that they avoid love, kind of like you've done, and haven't had a relationship in a long time or blow it every time. That's how I've gotten them into the arms of their one. They, they get on my wall of weddings that way. Um, just we can make that breakthrough. Anything can be healed, and we need to do that. That's the deepest inner work to make you not blow it this time and to get happily in his arms or in your soulmate's arms for the rest of your life. So I hope you'll do that. I'm blessing it for working out and you for working through the issues that are clearly coming up. And this is valuable. Even if he's not your guy, he's your teacher because he's showing you a place you need to work on. And um, I affirm that before you know it, you were in the, the arms of your soulmate walking hand in hand happily through life. All right, I bless you for that. I'm sending you and everybody who sees this so much love. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.